Yo, 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 my name is Bright and this is my in inaugural vlog. I'm sorry I've been drinking. I have a long trip ahead of me and you know what I do before I do that? I go drinking. But I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. I was invited to dinner and in Chinese dinner tradition you have to drink otherwise they lose face. So I drank. I bought a bottle of wine alone. So I'm I'm a little tipsy, but I'm good. I'm going to have in. I've I've been there before, but it was not that cold. I would like to go and see what extreme weather feels like. Uh, there's there's all this talk about oh minus twenty degrees, minus th they issue blue warnings, yellow warnings, red warnings. Fuck that shit. I want to see it myself. You know, I was born in a place where uh, it's very cold in Livingstonia, Rumpi, Malawi. It's on a plateau and it gets really cold. But it doesn't go beyond be below zero and and I would like to see the real thing, you know. So Harbin is a really good opportunity. I could have gone even even norther than, than Harbin, but unfortunately the, the planes are few, you know, and, and I don't think you can go there right now. So Harbin it is. Uh, it's accessible, it's very cheap. I'm going to take the slow train from Jinan and this train ride is going to take wait for it to any one hours. That is like a whole day I'll be on the train. I might miss the train if I don't if I if I don't if I don't go any sooner. But then that's the thing. I would like to see what extreme weather feels like and I will report back. I have I've watched a lot of YouTube videos where people are talking about what they wear, what they what you should wear, what you should do, how how to fly your drone and I'm, I'm charging I'm charging my drones and my camera stuff. But you know what? I want I just cut out the bullshit. I would like to, to see what it feels like myself. So I will report back very soon. So this is a train ticket uh, from Jinan to Harbin East. And uh, this is uh, going to take me 21 hours. And as you can see, I'm in the train station. There you go, auto focus. I'm waiting for my train and my train should leave in the next 30 minutes so everything is set uh, here's my bag I have a lot of stuff in there and this is uh, my camera bag as you can see I've got uh, my uh, NX NX camera Samsung or some NX lens and uh, my GoPro my charger and uh, some Gorilla pad and uh, in there and that's the remote for uh, for my uh, drone the Mavic Pro which is inside so uh, everything should be fine. Everything should be fine uh, very soon. And uh, what do I look like right now? Hi. And so the journey begins. Um, the temperatures are not see the colder now outside. It's uh, negative 12, negative 21. Um, I've been on the train for hours now. I've been on the train for well, 10 hours. I still have 10 hours to go. And this is way, way east, uh, way, way east of Beijing and almost close to North Korea. I can see the water in the pools is frozen, but it's sunny and it's good. And I'm on the train. Um, this is the uh, train. Um, let me give you another look. This is the train, so it's got three bunkers. So mine was on top. I have to rest on, on these chairs that, that, that are retractable. So it will be a long journey. It's only started. 10 hours more. So this is uh, 10 hours. I'm, I'm still on the on the on the on the road. Uh, ten hours left. This is in Liaoning, uh, the neighboring province to Heilongjiang. I'm going to Heilongjiang, so this is midway through the point from my province. And it will be interesting. Now I'll fare for the next ten hours, but it's okay. I can take it. It's not that bad, and the temperatures indoor are really controlled. So. 
there's uh, nothing to be scared about. So this is Shenya and uh, I have got uh, Six hours more before I get to my destination. This is very far away from anywhere. But I've always wanted to see Shenyang. It looks like any other Chinese city I know. So, in Shenyang, the journey continues. And it's now uh, 3 p.m. It's uh, 9 o'clock. And uh, one hour left before we hit Harbin. So the wait is still ongoing. Well, touchdown in Harbin, and I am in my hotel room. And watch this. As soon as I slotted in the key card, everything gets into shape. The lights come on, the heating comes on. This room is actually too hot for me I, I have to cut off some of the heating and uh, this is Harbin in a nutshell so right there is Harbin East railway station so I'm staying very close to the railway station I took a few precautions because I thought it would be so hot so hot uh, I, I thought it would be so cold I thought it would be so cold so I had to limit the amount of time between uh, uh, the train station and my hotel I, I basically just walked so luckily I found one that is just 150 meters so this was a really good one uh, it's on the it's, it's on the upper side in terms of pricing but but that was a precaution I had to take but I have however to confess that uh, it's not it's not that cold I, I did not have gloves, I did not have anything, I only had this t-shirt with nothing under it and I did not have a hat or earmuffs or anything and it was not that cold and it's supposedly uh, uh, 15 degrees below zero so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not convinced so I will have to go looking for trouble tomorrow but first of all I have to sleep, I have to eat, I'm hungry I have spent 21 hours on the train I got the, on the train at 12 o'clock and I went all the way sleeping, waking up, watching, you know, some drama series and I just got here at, what was that, 10.30. So that was a lot of time on the train. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I don't have uh, claustrophobia. But here I am. I, I, I will rewind and relax and take it easy. And see what Harbin has to offer in winter. I've been here in summer. It was okay, but you know, I'm disappointed because there's not much snow on, on the street. The city is not white enough. But we'll see what it has to offer. You know, I, I will go to check out the, the ice festival. I will go to the uh, main street to, to see how many people are outdoors in, in, the, in the extreme weather. And one thing I would like to try while here is uh, wait for it. I would like to do a. Some swimming, you know, some people go outdoors and, and, and swim in, in really freezing waters. I would, I would like to, to try that out too, so so help me God. Anyway, this is uh, my last vlog for tonight. Thank you. Okay, I'm going out and it's freezing out there, so I have to dress up <coughs> for the weather. I understand it's... Uh, negative 17 degrees so i'll start with this i use this uh, at the gym but today is going to uh, play my base protector so let's see uh, this is layer one i understand the the advice you're given when you visit places like having is that you have to dress up in layers so i'm going to issue one layer i'm not counting the inner underwear because that has to be in there and this is layer number two I wear this in my seat away, it's not very cold so we're going to go to three and this is not very thick but it does the trick so this is number three because I am going to visit the ice and snow festival everyone there says oh it's extremely cold you have to 
you have to stay outside just for an hour and then go back inside because it's, it gets too uncomfortable. So I don't want to be caught in the extreme weather. I'm going to be ready and I have I have the clothing to get ready with. This is a little small and you know what I'm sweating already. I don't know if I should do this but, but so they say okay and uh, one last one so this is also something I use at the gym and it's, it's heated inside but I'm not really sure <coughs> I should do this because at this point I can just go with <coughs> this guy <coughs> and then everything would be okay but let's see what should happen should I okay You know what? This one is off. Oh God. I'm just, I'm already sweating and I'm shitless. <clears throat> this one is off. On goes this brother. Who is a really warm addition. And he's lined with fleece so it's a, it's, it's a really good one and then <coughs> should I go on this one or this one? okay if I go with this one I'm, <coughs> I'm not going wrong at all so also this one is for uh, my gym my gym excursions is also lined with this but the good thing is that it's extra large so whatever I put on it will, will enter in here and still not look back here. I could have gone this one with extra pockets, but I feel like this one has got an extra advantage that it's going to be warm. So here I go. And yes, the leg slides right into it. Without any problems. Good. But next two. But I'm exposed at the knees. So, <clears throat> what do I do? Well, I've got a solution and these are my Kelme football socks so I'm going to go with uh, these ones first these are ex these are warm these feeler socks these are warm I put on one of these and I've survived the whole winter it's too much I go indoors and I take it off because it's too warm but I'm going to go with this one and then uh, add in a bit of this so just to be safe so here I go. <clears throat> as for the shoe, uh, as for the shoe, I've got uh, this red cord. It's a hiking shoe. Uh, not very good in black ice, but it's really good. It's military grade. You can. I have done so much in this shoe, and the reason I chose this shoe is because it also looks good. Cool. It gives you that military feeling. You know when <laughs> when people who are not in the army put on the uh, camouflage or fatigues they they tend to have some balls you know so when I put on that one and I've got my <laughs> National Geographic bag I've got that false sense of you know, the illusion of invulnerability as we used to call it in my psychology days it, it, it does tend, tends to stay with you but yeah I know I'm, I'm not shit I'm not a soldier. Could have been a soldier. Could have been a soldier. But I chose to be. What am I now? Don't know, man. Well, I could have been a soldier, but I chose to be human. Ah, take all that back. Bringing this up. I'm gonna do it. To my coat. Okay, on top. Go, 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 go. Ah, oh, the blood circulation. I can feel it. <laughs> I can, I can feel my, my blood, letting up. I was like, yeah, I don't want us down here. No, I do. I do. Ah. 
problemas. I do. Okay, everyone down. Oh god. <laughs> you know what? I just wanted to I wanted to go all the way down to nothing. That would have been a spectacle, wouldn't it? But yeah. We have to agree that I'm extremely exposed down my, my feet. <coughs> but I still will have faith. Okay. I have faith. If anything goes wrong, I just pack an extra. An extra pack of socks, you know. If anything goes wrong, it gets extremely cold, as they say. You can run into some toilet and add on a layer of socks, but I'll be on the move. I'll be constantly on the move, so I think this this will suffice. No need to be dramatic or anything. But I also have a feeling that <coughs> this city is not cold enough, so tomorrow. <coughs> I'm going north to the Russian border. Okay, so what do I put on here? Protect. Now, something that always does does it for me is a uh, where's that bag? Something that always does it for me when I'm back in uh, Jinan. Are these guys? They look small, but they are extremely important you put them on and then everything you put on after that is just extra so i'll start with this <coughs> as my base it's not cotton it's something i can nylon that's that's that and, and uh sh here we go now And then I'll put on this. <coughs> Though I have a feeling this should be the face. Mm, this is also my sports attire. I've not been to the gym in many days, so happy to see them working out here. Okay. This is part of my sports cut look. The one. Why am I getting this one? It's because uh, <coughs> my jacket is not very tight at the waist, so I'm going to use uh, this one to cut the wind into my vitals. And then, this guy. So, this guy <coughs> is huge and is nice. You know, it's, it's got that feel good factor. But it's just one more layer of cloth, warm layer. I believe that after this, I should be good to go. You know, I don't have to pretend like I'm an Eskimo. I'm really from Africa. <laughs> I'm real. I'm really from Africa. You know, and I'll, I'll be here for what? Two, three days. So I don't have to do all the drama. But it doesn't hurt to get ready. 
Okay, we got set. I'll bring in this boy. We're gonna do that and do that. Oh God, I'm sweating. Good. So that's all. I'll put on uh, these gloves for when I'm just moving about, and then I'll have gloves which can be used to uh, touch screen. So this is how I look, almost like a ninja, right? And I forgot to mention, uh, I have to wear the mask to put <laughs> this, this mask is uh, the most important feature for me today, I think, because when I went out outside, it was polluted as hell. I couldn't breathe and I, I choked on my own air and I was like, you know what, no. Luckily, I brought some masks over from Jinan, which is a really polluted city. So I'm ready and uh, I, I have on the gloves but I've got some uh, some uh, more gloves packed. There you go. I've got some more gloves packed. But these are good because they can uh, maneuver the touch screen. So I'm going out ready for today. I really look like someone that should be <laughs> arrested for some crime that's going to be committed soon. But maybe there's going to be a crime because I'm going to fly a drone in this city. This is I don't many know rules about drone flying. Everyone is covered in layers and layers. I was just thinking the other time. How do the hookers and have and do their trip? I mean, if you were to get a hooker, how would you fuck her? How many layers of clothing does they have in a hooker have? Maybe I just. I just need to get one hooker and just watch her strip so that I can see <laughs> I can see how much clothing these people wear. Everyone is loaded with so much cloth you can barely see what they actually are. But with that said, I am mingling around Centre Harbin. One common feature about Central Harbin is uh, the ubiquity of Western brands. Now, I don't get food. A lot of it is just advertising and no, no substance. But there is a lot of international posters. I wonder what it all means for people in Harbin. Is it really? Oh, great. And in a very bizarre... This is in the middle of the road and someone is there. I don't know why. I... This is China Brook. Continuing with my journey, I understand in, in the extreme cold weather, the battery is discharging like hell. You know, I had 99% when I left home, but right now my battery is at 6 and I just got out because it's negative what? It's negative 16, I understand, but I don't know why that is the case though. Shouldn't be that hard on the buttons, <laughs> but in terms of the cameras, I think they're holding on steady. <clears throat> yes, I brought my GoPro, but we did not do a lot of work because I forgot I forgot the handle, so I can't use my GoPro. And here I am. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These are these are some uh, some interesting things about having this. The building goes inside, and it's like this dugout where you have to go in there. I guess it's to keep them warm, but I wouldn't want to be in there when it floods. 
or something that extreme happens, but moving on. The reason I'm moving straight is because across from me, I can see a dead end, you know. There are no buildings. So I'm thinking maybe that's the river. So I will go straight all the way. I know where I got off and I know how to go back to my I know how to go back to my hotel. But what is what is there? What's beyond me? And this is our travel. I uh, use maps. I hardly ever use maps. I just go into a city to get lost. But one thing I do is I map down the buildings in my head. So I don't forget what I've seen. And it is very important to me. Because if anything goes haywire, I'm fucked. So I have to know what I saw and what I didn't see. I'm thinking I've been here but I don't know. So one feature of Harbin is this Russian style church. It's, well, I've never been to Russia but I know a Russian church when I see one. So I should, maybe I should say Orthodox churches, but one thing you, you see a lot in having is this Orthodox style churches. But don't get fooled. Okay, there's another one. So another one. Right here, this one is huge, almost like the cathedral I know from home. But don't get fooled. This is still an uh, officially atheist country and uh, the government is really, really uh, not in cahoots with the Christian de denomination. So. Uh, <coughs> all these are just a clever play to get some tourists coming into this city, but really, you don't want to be a Christian in China, or Muslim in China. The other time my camera died, but <coughs> here I am again. This is the central street uh, in Harbin. In summer, this place is impossible, but now there are a few people. But it's kind of nice. I'm just going to walk uh, the length of it. From here to the end but my camera my camera froze over because you can see uh, that advert right there is is a, a small sculpture so from somewhere in December to March this city is below zero so it is freezing right now and I'm just gonna make my video short because it's going to freeze over again so uh, I'll catch you very soon. I mean, there are people everywhere. There are young people, old people. And police matching up and down. Yes, this is China. You have to show that it's secure. It's still not peaceful. All the worst could happen, but... Look at the numbers, man, and it goes on. It goes on for hours and hours. You can walk like this and especially in summer when people are not in school this place gets ridiculously crowded but it's all good and I I like what I see this is why I came here and uh, there's about uh, 600 meters to, to the end of the street so way way up there and then I will get uh, to the river, which is supposed to be uh, a <laughs> the come shot for me because I, I would like to see the river. I came here when it was still flowing, it should be frozen over now. Can I get on the river? That's an open question. Can I get on the river? That's what I'll try to do. So, uh, turning off. Been here before, right? I just want to see the people coming into my picture. Mm -hmm. All right.
right, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. So, you can see that that layer of ice, it's going down about two meters. This is the big river that passes at the end, at the northern end of Harbin, I believe. So, this is Harbin and this is the river, that's the bridge. Now it's frozen over. Now, right there is the huge theme park. People can come, snow. I mean, people are parking SUVs and that's there. That's right there is the ferry. It's frozen over, useless now. But it is amazing what has happened to this river. And I don't know where the fish are. And with, with hundreds, hundreds and thousands of people on the river behind me, I wonder what would happen if all these sites were to give away in an instant. It would be a disaster. But I bet it's so strong, you know, going down uh, about a meter and a half. That should hold anything that's thrown in it. But it's really beautiful here. And it's very cold, so I have to uh, end this video right now because my camera dies, so it takes a long time for me to reboot it. And when it dies because of cold water, cold weather, it loses the files, it doesn't save. So, so what I'm working on and what they're skidding on is the river. That's the main river in Harbin. But now it's frozen over and people have come to invade it. It's been turned into a theme park. It's like, uh, I think that's two centimeters. No, <laughs> not two centimeters. I think that's two meters of ice down there. <coughs> One uh, begins to think what would happen if all this gives. I, I don't want to be in that situation, but it's really fun to be here and it's nice and it's very cold as well. But I can prepare. So that's that. Uh, the last time I was here, they were just boats. Now the boats are there, frozen over in time. Um, Okay, so this is the Harbin Ice and Snow Festival. It is humongous. These things are, I understand, in there is skyscraper size. So I'm just going in to check out what the fuss is all about, but it's really, it really looks impressive. But side note, it's very, very cold and it's freezing. It's negative 14 and it's fast going towards negative 20. So I have to strap up and uh, make sure I'm warm. My feet are really starting to lose touch with reality. But let's see what I want. let's see what I want. You can see people are going in. Uh, it starts in the evening. Uh, I think it's uh, free today because it's Chinese New Year. But we'll see. And uh, again, my electronics are dying because, <laughs> because of uh, the cold weather. You lose, you lose your battery five times faster in, in cold weather. I could see like my battery going from 60 to 60 to, to 59, 58. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa like a taxi meter or something but i hope everything is going to be fine and uh, let's let's see what i want uh, the ticket is stupidly expensive this is 300 five and people are queuing everywhere and so this is the entrance so this is the happening ice and snow festival it is incredible to say the least. I'm inside now. The tickets cost a fortune, 300. But when you get in there, you get to experience the real thing. So this is a huge slide. People go all the way to the top and then way, way down here. So it's really nice. And of course, being Asia, that uh, baby fest Buddha is over there so you can pay your provide your respects to the Buddha my voice is muffled because I'm under some sheathing it's extremely cold it's negative uh, negative 16 now so everything you see is snow and everything you step on is snow so it's Good, it's good. I'm a little disappointed because it's not very cold in, in Harbin. 
so tomorrow I've decided to go to the, the border with Russia in a city called Hey Hey to check out the place and see how cold it is. But in Harbin, not very cold. Not very cold. So uh, I didn't find Harbin to be cold enough, so I'm heading north to Rehra. Uh, and the sun is colder there and it borders Russia. So, so help me God. I'm now just exiting the uh, subway. This is uh, under Habin. This is uh, Habin. This is Habin uh, railway station. This is Habin railway station. So, uh, help me God. I hope I can catch my plane. It's it's leaving in just two hours. <clears throat> this is it. Um, time. Two hours. I'm here in Hai Hai, and the temperature outside is minus twenty six degrees. <laughs> It's beautiful and something I forgot to mention it's bloody polluted here so wear a good mask wear a good mask because <laughs> it's so polluted I can hardly breathe you think this was Russia if you see everywhere you look there's the Russian alphabet even the road signs here pay homage to the fact that they are Near Russia, this sleepy town. Ah. Hello. So you'd ask me, Bright, what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear is waking up one day and finding out I'm dead. It's why each day I go out there and live my life to the fullest. Right, and today I'm in Hei Hei. Hei Hei is the last city between China and Russia. That is a city called Blago. It's a long name, but it's, you can just say Blago. Well, the temperatures are extreme. Today is 27 degrees below zero. That is colder than the Arctic Circle right now. It's very dangerous. I need to go indoors right now, and my vitals are already freezing. But I came here to cross something off my bucket list. I've done it. I'm going back home uh, in a few in a few uh, hours so I get to keep moving next week I will be in the very south of China to see what the temperature is like there what the food is like and what people do in times like this uh, side note if you if you wanted to run away to China from China I think this is the best way and this is the best month because with the river with the river frozen you could simply just jump over and run to Russia it's not it's not really hard to do really let me show you so this is uh, the, the wire that they've set up but if you just go over there jump over that ramp you'd go across to Blago but the problem is that Russia Russia is becoming poorer these days and the Chinese are getting richer. I bet all the construction that is happening there is using materials from this side. So maybe the Chinese are putting up this wire to protect themselves from those guys. I, I get rabid after a trip and uh, I'm here tearing into this. This is a lot, a lot of meat. This is lamb and uh, that's some steamed bread and uh, some ra Russian juice. Or should I should I air quote Russian juice? Uh, mission completed. I'm going back to the airport. My flight is at uh, 1700 hours, so I'm going to make it. So here's what happened. Uh, the flight is supposed to take off in the next what five minutes, but we are a bit late. I hope we'll make it. Uh, this is a very small airport. It's a very small plane, only one plane, 
and we should be in Harbin in, in just one hour 20 minutes I hope this is gonna work out when I get to Harbin I'll decide where to go but for now to Harbin it's very cold it's six o'clock in the morning I'm at Harbin airport going back to Jinan it's going to be a short journey by the end of one journey that I'm going to remember for a very long time I don't think I'll be coming back to uh, northern China. I've seen it all. I've done it all. I came. I saw. I conquered. So I checked in. I'm, I'm walking towards my plane now. Uh, there was a bit of drama. The lady did not want my power bank through the security. Even though I flown with it on two other flights. She's just being lazy so I told her why, why, why? And then the uh, manager came over. They made me sign some document and I went through with it. I think I should be more cautious when flying with gadgets. You know, they are very edgy when they see a drone, when they see cameras and stuff like that. So what's the takeaway from my trip to the northern, northern part of China? I would say Harbin. Harbin was a disappointment. Uh, things are stupidly expensive. And the experience is not that worthwhile. You know, I <clears throat> I went to the Ice and Snow Festival. It was not just there, you know, I paid 300 but didn't feel it. <clears throat> but when I went to Hei Hei, that was the highlight of the trip. Hei Hei is like two hours from Harbin to the north. So there was, there was more snow there, less people, no tourists, absolutely no tourists. Ever three or five Russians that were in the same bus with me but it was because they were going across the border so all in all my, my trip my last trip to northern China was really good and especially the trip to Hei Hei that was the highlight so next week I'm going to uh, Hainan in Hainan I'm going to uh, also focus on the weather is it hot is it cold and then we'll see from there. So I'm, I'm back in the crowded area. I'm not very good with uh, I'm not very good with talking when people are around. But that's that's if I, if I were to weigh my trip, if I were to weigh my trip, I would say it was satisfactory, costly, in a way, but it did the trick. So I would take a two-hour plane back to Jinan and back to reality. And next week, I will see you from uh, from Hainan. Uh, something else I should add is that the whole the whole idea that you should wear a lot when you come to Harbin is bullshit. And uh, that's my verdict. What you need to do is something to protect uh, your extremes, your fingers and your toes. That's what you're going to be dealing with. The rest of the body, you can go with one coat you know two layers three layers you'll be fine you don't have to overdo it. it it is the experience inside the city that matters so for example uh, today yesterday when I came in Harbin uh, my flight is at 7 this morning now the city is 37 K's that way so you have to take a taxi and to come back here at 7 would be a bit of pressure you know so what, what you should do and, and this is uh, uh, on your own risk you know, around the airports there are ladies who have hotels around the around the uh, airport I've, I've done this in Shanghai too yes it seems risky but the hotels are good grade and they cheap and they bring you back to the airport in the morning today so so yesterday when I arrived I, I you know, checked in with one of the ladies that came up to me that went nearby the airport but you know 5k's and this morning, someone entered my room to wake me up at five. They get ready, and then they brought me back to the to the airport. When I came to Shanghai, it was the same thing. Just hooked up with one of the ladies that ro that loiter in the in the airport. No, it's it's not that. It's a proper hotel. It's a proper hotel. So I went to that hotel and I um, spent the night. It was cheap, about two hundred for Shanghai. That's that's a deal. And, and uh, yesterday I paid like 202, you know. But if I went back to the city, I would have paid, uh, that is uh, 70 
for a taxi, 70 for a taxi, coming back that's about 140 and that's the closest you can go into the city and then you have to spend the hotel there so you have to be smart when you want to, to travel on a budget uh, to northern China. When you come here don't, don't be worried about too much things, just be worried about uh, the experience really. So the things that the brochures say uh, don't cut it for me. So for example the, the highlight of uh, her being in the winter is the Ice and Snow Festival which is which is silly really you know because having has very little snow and uh, you, you you can you can check out the uh the, the ice uh, near near the uh, cbd uh Zhongyang street and then you can go to other cities i, I would recommend moha or manjoli in, in mongolia or uh what's that now hey hey where i've been so that's that. This is my recap. I think my train, my my plane is boarding. I don't want to be stuck here. So thank you very much, and see you in Hainan. So I've just landed at uh, Haiko Airport. Haiko is in Hainan. Hainan is uh, the southernmost province of China. The temperatures here are already boiling. I'm coming from Jinan where it was hot, where it was cold when I left, but here in Hainan. Uh, I'm gonna have to take this off, but this is uh, going to be the end of a long journey that I started a long time ago in the north of China. Now I want to see the very southern tip of China. What is it like there, the temperatures, the vegetation, the food, and even the language. So I'm here on a journey of discovery, and we'll see what happens. Last week I was at the Chinese border with Russia and the temperatures were frigid, 26 degrees below zero. That was colder than inside the Arctic Circle at that time. I've run over across the Tropic of Cancer and I'm in Hainan. Hainan is the southernmost province of China and the temperatures here are 26 degrees to the pool. So if you ask me, what are the differences between north and south of China? I think there are marked differences between these two countries. In terms of language, uh, the language in the south of China, they, they have that Cantonese touch. It was very funny because in the bus when they made an announcement, the people that I came over with from North China were like, Shema Yi, It was like, what, what did you just say? They also could not understand what the guy had said. So the language is really, really vast, vastly varied across China. So that's, that's the first difference. Also, I think uh, people in the, in the south of China, have a laissez fair approach to life. I've, I've not seen a lot of patriotism in, in South China as I've seen in Northern China. I've come to Sanya. I hear it's the most beautiful city in China and I want to see by myself. It's very hot, it's uh, about 29 degrees Celsius. So, what is it that makes Sanya? such a big holiday destination for Chinese people. Many people come from all over China to Sanya to check it out. And I've come here for myself. I'm on a tight budget. But that's the... It doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> this is uh, Donghai Bay in uh, not Donghai Bay, Donghai Bay in Sanya. I came here to swim, but I can't because no one is swimming that far. But 
this place epitomizes uh, real, real beauty because uh, there are all these nice hotels on the beachfront and then people just going about their businesses so it is nice but <clears throat> I think it's too touristy you know I've seen a lot of people who are supposed to be tourists so it's too touristy for me it, it explains why you can't go that far because you know the authorities are concerned but other than that it's a nice place I think in terms of uh, in terms of China this is a wonderful beach it's not very crowded like the, the beaches in in Qingdao and, <laughs> and all those places they can get really crowded this place this is really moderate for a Chinese beach and it's clean and also the thing is uh, with the, this new generation of Chinese boys that are coming up there's not a lot of spitting about the place so it's really nice, it's really nice, it's nothing and I was talking to my mate just now saying you know what if you can come to Sanya you, you don't need to go to Vietnam and all those Southeast Asian countries because Sanya has it all but of course that guy who has been to many places in the said region said oh no no in uh, <clears throat> in southeast asia they have uh, cheaper food and the food is nicer that was really interesting for me but definitely something i will have to keep in mind when i travel i think about food a lot so if Southeast Asia has cheaper and better and safer food, then why not? Why not? So today is my last day in Hainan and uh, tonight I'm flying back to Jinan where I live and then on Monday of course I'm back to work. So it's been a sobering experience. I've, uh, I've enjoyed being out here. I've enjoyed doing stuff. And the fact that I'm going back to sub zero temperature region, uh, it's going to be a shock. Reverse shock, I should say. You know, here it's, it feels like 30 degrees right now. It is very very hot Hello. Uh -huh. it is very very hot and yes there are a lot of Russians on the beach uh, in the city I've seen they use dual languages, so they have Chinese and Russian. This is very strange because Russia is very far away. Maybe it was because they recently had summits where Mr. Putin came over here. But I don't understand why they went for Russian. Well, I didn't. Now I do because a lot of the clientele here, when I was swimming, most of the guys that came up to me were Russians. So. I get it and this should appeal to a lot of Russians as well because you know it's, it's it's summer here when it's winter there so why not why not I'd like to buy one of those one day. I feel like 
a man is never truly a man until he owns a jet ski. <laughs> they can be pretty expensive. They are as expensive as a small car. But that's okay, I guess. They want it. So my train leaves at 4, but before I leave, I need to do, to do me some swimming. And we'll do that by going back to a place near here. Where I can strip and dip. Tattoos. I understand in some in some places in Japan they don't let people with tattoos strip or enter. The proliferation of tattoos in China has ballooned lately. But out here uh, there are not many people with tattoos. This is a bit strange. Here I am at the end of this beach. I will go up there and then go back home. A little disappointed because the barriers have been set. Uh, it's about, you can only go 50 meters. 50 meters is not good enough for me. I need to swim, like disappear from the coastline. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it here. So, let down. But in this heat, I could use any type of water that's thrown at me, I guess. I just need to swim. Many people not coming here, and why are people going to Thailand instead, where they sometimes end up dead? So maybe it's the uh, the drugs and the prostitutes that you can find in those other places. Yeah, here if you want to find a prostitute, you have to dig deeper. And if you want to find drugs in China, <laughs> good luck. Yeah, the sentences are the same, you know. They, they would kill you here if they found you with enough drugs. And the prostitutes, you really have to know where to look. You just can't find them, you know, on the street side. You, you have to go to places or, or open up certain applications. Then you'll find that type of crowd. With that said, I would, I would understand why you know, this country is not as attractive to people because you, you, you just come here, have good food, you know, mingle with the Chinese and nothing else in terms of nightclubs, nah, they, they do it the Chinese style which is boring, you go, you go to a nightclub and you watch dancers, so they have these women who dance with their hands and not their bodies, so you, you sit there and you watch you watch them dance and they expect you to buy where you sit you, you know you have to pay for the seat 
the, the drinks are stupidly expensive, you know, and they are targeted at Chinese people who are very rich. So we just want to have fun for the night, you know, dance. Now this is uh, this is not a place. So I guess I guess that's part of the you know the thing that's wrong with Chinese tourism. You just can't have the fun that tourists expect to have. But if you just want to come and see. I would recommend a place like Siam. A country like China. When I go back into the city, <coughs> I will look for a nice meal and a hammer like a hungry hyena because I'm famished at the moment. Yes, I know my audio game is not very top drawer. I'm just using the GoPro. This is my first ever, you know, vlog, I should say. This is my first ever vlog. I don't do vlogs, so why not? But the, the audio game will get better. I have the tools. I do have the tools, so I will just have to use them. They are cumbersome. That should be safe. But when has that ever stopped man from doing what he wants? This restaurant is called the Medusa. Interesting name. Very interesting name. The one thing that I've done a lot here is the fruit. The fruits are way, way cheaper here. And I've gone to town. Sometimes I'm not eating food, you know. Uh, fruits are food. But sometimes I've not eaten a proper meal just because I chose to go to town on some pineapple and you know, fruits. I like it. They're sweet, nice, fresh. You can feel the authenticity because they're grown local. In the northern part of China, the fruits are imported from Vietnam and this So this is the theme. We have uh, Chinese, Beijing, Jin, toilet, English. I think that is toilet too in uh, Russian and then Korean and then Japanese. But that's not very common. It's mostly just Russian and Chinese. In some cities it's just Korean and Chinese. So very interesting how they choose which languages to be the postal language but I understand it's, it depends on the numbers 
There are some tea cities that are very famous with uh, Koreans. Some cities that are very famous with uh, Japanese. So, I guess the city councils dance to those tunes. Uh, if I were to say how many in Insania, I think Russia wins. I could be wrong because Japanese and the Koreans and Chinese mingle. You know, you wouldn't tell the difference right away. But the people that stand out here, Russian looking. Yes, I met someone from Kazakhstan. I met someone from Armenia. But it feels like the whole Eastern Europe is attracted to this city. In, in the hotels where I stay, they have Hello. In the hotels where I stay, they have posters with uh, Russian and English. No, 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 not English, just Russian. So I do understand why why that is the case. But more needs to be done. You know, this this city should have, should be available to everyone, Russian or English speaking. Yes, and there's that thing where most, most uh, foreigners here wear bikinis and the locals, uh, someone told me that there's some sort of aversion towards bikinis. So you see a lot of foreigners wearing bikinis, but not Chinese people. Chinese people will go for more um, more traditional type of swimwear you will not see us but yeah the foreigners here are like yeah fuck it they have all manner of bikinis and it's a shock to the locals who have to I, I've seen a lot of Chinese people taking pictures of the foreigners because they have this it's a shock to them Oh, is it? So I'm back to the entrance. This should also be an exit, I think. Uh, from here, I'll go to the bus bus station take the same bus that took me here and then kapong go back to where i can eat and swim mm. i think i know where i will eat there's a muslim restaurant near here some Muslim restaurants are very popular in China, especially with Africans because the cuisine is closer to home. Now you can go to a Muslim restaurant and order any type of food and you wouldn't go wrong. It's not that, it, that I don't like Chinese food, but for a Muslim restaurant, they try to, to make the portions for one person. You know. In some Chinese restaurant, you order fish and they give you fish enough for 20 people. You know. So they target large numbers. But Muslim restaurants, just one man, one plate.
，最好你买好这个车回去，我们到那去玩去，就是。都游完了，你看，还打，再打两个，三个哈，四个哈，两个，五个哈。今年我五年级呀，带了一个超级的。哎呀，你别早点跑到人上山上上就好了。这是个大拇指。Back to the main street. From here, you can take a bus to many places, and that's bus number eight. But first, I said I needed to eat. One in four people are Chinese and today I want to show you what they look like in their natural habitat. This is uh, Sanya.
Sanya is in uh, Hainan, at the very end of China, to the south. So there are people going down the streets, people going up the streets, people buying, people selling. As the Chinese say, Renshan. <laughs> I don't know how to complete that saying, but it's just a lot of people. A lot of people. I I do like a crowd like this because where I grew up, you know, Livingstonia, there were very few people, you know, most of them students. And when they go on holiday, we could we could not see a lot of people. And these days, it's, it's like therapy, you know, when I see a lot of people. Makes me calm. You know. But also, this is the reality. This is the reality of this earth. You, know. you can imagine the number of uh, fish. That people like uh, Chinese eat in a day. You now all these people have to eat some rice, some fish, some meat. Everyone needs to drive to ride. Everyone needs a house. You know, in the end, it's, it's a lot of damage on the ecosystem. But the reality is here with us. You know, people are here. There's nothing we can do about it apart from you know, managing. They are cute people, fat people, short people, tall people, very dark people, light people, and all sorts of people. No. We've come to the end of that street. Next, I would like to show you what they drive. So, uh, this is the typical streets, you know, you envision in China, neon lights and, uh, you know, gives you that real Chinese feeling. So, this street, uh, is restaurants, but one thing that caught my attention in this street is uh, the, the number of uh, bikes. There are thousands and thousands of bikes. I understand they are e-bikes, so nothing, none of them runs on petrol. So that's one huge thing, you know. Earlier I was talking about how there are too many Chinese people and they all want to ride to drive something. But here you are. This whole neighborhood has got very few cars. You know, his name. And most people here ride e-bikes. So that's that's a huge positive sign to take home. That's a huge positive sign. You know. So we don't have too much. But still, it is a huge footprint. It's a huge footprint on, on Mother Earth, you know. These could be e-bikes, but they're still metals. These could be e-bikes, but, you know, they still have a lot of plastic in them. In a few years, uh, what will happen? So, it's a really strange situation that we have here. I, I, I do like a Chinese street like this, so uh, it's a strange city to me, I've never been here before. And I just like getting lost, taking a turn, moving, you know. Just getting to see Chinese people at their natural best, because they, 
many people who come to China or people who study China sometimes get a polished view of uh, what China is. You, know? you go to Beijing, you go, you, you come to Sanyang and you go to the beachfront. You know, when I was at the beach today, everyone that I met was not from China. Oh, was not from Hainan. Everyone was from another city, Si'an, Jinan. You know, and these are people with money coming here to do the holiday thing. The real natives do not have that luxury, and you have to come to places like this to see Chinese people in their natural habitat. So that's that. And I've uh, exited that street and back into the wider streets. I can see some cars, so I will stop there. And here, uh, there's one more, one more. So I'll go to the end of this and look for something to eat. But it does look residential. And the, the fact that it's so narrow up ahead, you know, you can, you can literally it's it's so narrow, it's scary. But it it, it does does look good. And to the left, to the right, uh, people are eating. People are playing pool. I've seen in one building uh, some ladies dressed like they want to sell something that's on their body. And uh, this is a huge city, and, and China is a huge country. I've always been baffled at how the police keep uh, the peace here. And I've noticed it's pretty easy. Chinese police focus on uh, being seen, so they just they do a show of force. So, like 10 policemen move down the streets. You know, they know they are outnumbered. It's like one million to one. But they just move down the streets to show, yeah, yeah, we're here and we're watching. And then they disappear, you know. So each Chinese person is individually feeling responsible, all being watched. But if they wanted, they could do lots and lots of illegal stuff in this country and in a city like this. Imagine if this was back home in Malawi or somewhere in South Africa. The crime that would spawn in this and if I flew a drone from here these streets go on and on and on. If I, I flew a drone from here you would appreciate the number. Wow. You would appreciate the number of these neighborhoods and the amount of people that should be in it. So, I'm pretty sure that by now, in just one street, I have, uh, I have seen more bikes than they are, say, in the whole city of Blantyre. That's, that's easily true. But is this, this is just one street, and a small neighborhood of that much. So, the, the way they organize their societies, Incredible. I, I, I like it. I like it. So I'm coming to an opening that should take me to a more polished side of this city. And I'll have, you know, I'm always cautious that, uh, anyway, let me stop here. So this is it. Uh, this is uh, Sanya Railway Station. This is the end of my journey and I will not be making any more trips in a long time. For now I have to go back to Jinan. So long Sanya. It, this, this is called a beautiful city for a reason. It's truly beautiful. It's, the, the public transportation is immaculate. You've got buses, beautiful taxis and this thing, they, 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 they have uh, some uh, real system it's real nice it's real nice i enjoyed my trip to sanya and i hope 
I'll be back here soon. Ciao.